and you are all very welcome to this act of worship which is recorded for Sunday the 19th of July. Our preacher today is Christina so let us worship God together. Our call to worship today is, is taken from Psalm 86. Teach me your way O Lord that I may walk in your truth Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love towards me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. We've chosen the hymn 455 from Singing the Faith All my hope on God is founded Now, let us pray together. Creator God, we gather in the knowledge and vision of your love. In the risen Christ, Jesus' disciples were filled with new hope and they saw that you called them to speak your message of renewal, commitment, forgiveness and freedom. We praise you that you have called us to share that hope even in the uncertainty that we often feel. You dwell with us, your love enfolds us and we find peace in your presence. 
we praise you that Jesus brings new insights into the world and that through his life, death and resurrection you continue to speak with us today. Jesus reached out his hands in healing, in friendship and in blessing. May we do the same in his name today. We praise you that you continue to reach out into the life of the world. That in our deepest uncertainty, you bring the certainty of your love. In the place of deepest darkness, you bring your light. And into our lives, you bring your forgiveness. Creator God, we pray that you continue to inform our compassion. Be our vision and bright light. Hope and peace to us and to all the world. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from Genesis. Genesis chapter 28 verses 10 to 19. Jacob left Beersheba and went to, to Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and laid down in that place. And he dreamt that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land in which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid. And he said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he put under his head, and he set it up for a pillar, and pour, poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at the first. Let us pray. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our refuge. Amen. Jacob is regarded as a patriarch and a very important figure in all three Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. And yet at the beginning of his career, 
his behavior does not really resemble the one of a saint. He is a cheater and a trickster. In fact, after having acquired birthright by exchanging it for a lentil soup, he disguises himself as his brother Esau and receives the blessing from his father Isaac. Because of that, he is forced to go on a journey to escape from Esau's vengeance. It is not a pleasant situation. He is in exile from his family and he is alone. He cannot go back home and the journey before him is full of uncertainties. Darkness is approaching and Jacob, probably exhausted, decides to stop for the night. He falls asleep. In the midst of his loneliness and anxiety, this is probably the most vulnerable moment. And it is in the vulnerability of his sleep that God meets him. God meets Jacob renewing God's blessing to him when Jacob is at one of his lowest points, when he is most vulnerable. Jacob is dreaming. He sees a ladder, a way that connects the earth with heaven. There is a lot of action in the dream. Angels are going up and down, perhaps strengthening the connection between heaven and earth. Like Jacob, the angels are on the move. Only God is present and is static. When all around is in constant movement, in constant change, God is the point of reference. God is our landmark. Jacob the liar, the trickster, has done nothing to initiate this encounter. It all starts by God, who, instead of telling him all that he has done wrong, renews the divine blessing with Jacob. When God calls us, meets us, and blesses us, God does not look for perfect people. Rather, God is looking for God's imperfect and yet beloved children. From a human perspective, there is nothing logical in God's law for us. Perhaps this is why God meets Jacob in dream. Communication with God is initiated by the divine and it seems to fall outside the stream of logic. In the Celtic spirituality, places where heaven and earth meet are called thin space. In our text, it is the vulnerability of sleep, where logic disappears, that God meets Jacob. Despite lockdown, we are on a journey as well. Like Jacob, we are prevented from going back to our old life and we are journeying towards the new normal, towards a future that it is unknown. During these past months, we have known several low points, feeling anxious and vulnerable. And so today it is good to be reminded that it is in the thin space that God meets us. It is good to be reminded how the divine is close to us. In the dream, God renews God's blessing and plans for the future to Jacob. It is important to notice that God's blessing and God's plan for the future are not limited only to Jacob, but include his family, his descendants. And it is also remarkable to notice how those, in turn, will be blessing for other people. 
dear friends, as we continue considering how we can be church in the new normal, let us today be strengthened by knowing that God is present and God is close to us. As we pray and discern God's voice for our mission, let us be reminded that our lower points and our vulnerability are good places where God meets and talks to us. As we reflect on how we can rebuild a society grounded on fairness and solidarity, let us be empowered by God's plans in our lives and let us become a blessing for others. Amen. Let us now have our prayer of intercessions where we pray for us, for our community and for the world. Please pray with me. Let us pray. We pray for the world around us. We pray for the environment, for peace where there is conflict, for racial and social justice to be seen throughout the world. We pray for our communities, for those who are shielding, for those who are fearful, for those working for the good of others in many different ways in our community. We pray for all who work in the NHS and for all the key workers and those on whom we rely. We pray for our church community as we seek new ways of fulfilling our calling as the church in these times. We pray for our families, for our friends, for our neighbors. We pray for those who are ill and for those who are struggling financially or emotionally at this time. We pray for those who are grieving as we remember those who have died. And so in the stillness, we take a moment where we bring our prayers to God. And let us gather all our spoken and unspoken prayer by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. And so we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us now sing together our next hymn. the journey. Come wait a while, stay a while, welcome you'll be. Come all you questioners, looking for answers and searching for reasons and sense in it all. Come all you fallen and come all you broken, find strength for your body and food for your soul. Come to the feast, there is room at the table. Come let us meet in this place. 
With the king of all kindness Welcomes us in with the wonder of love And the power of grace The wonder of love and the power of grace station and orientation the helpless the hopeless the young and the old come to the feast there is room at the table come let us meet in this place with the king of all kindness who welcomes us in with the wonder of love and the power of grace the wonder of love and the power of grace and schemers and come all you restless just searching for home movers and shakers and givers and takers the happy the sad the lost and alone come self-sufficient with wearied ambition and come those who feel at the end of the road Accusers, abusers, the hurt and ignored Come to the feast, there is room at the table Come let us meet in this place With the king of all kindness who welcomes us in With the wonder of love and the power of grace Come to the feast, there is room at the table Let us receive the grace and the blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, for now and evermore. Amen. Several of today's prayers were adapted from the Methodist Worship from Home Service Sheet from Sunday, the 19th of July, 2020, by Philip Wobstock.